for these problems, we have higher powers on the X here, but we're still gonna be using some factoring techniques that we learned already uh, for this section. So for this first one, we notice that we have a six, a three, and we have 729. So um, this is actually one that we're gonna factor like this. Now we are gonna have higher powers on this one. If we wanna get X to the sixth, then the way that we're gonna break that up is we're gonna do a cube and a cube. If I multiply these together, I would just add the exponents and I would get X to the sixth. And so that's the first thing that I'm gonna do. Next, you wanna find two numbers that multiply to make 729 and add to be 54. So these are kind of some big numbers and so you may need to use uh, a calculator on this. But first start with these. A lot of the problems in this section have to do with things being squared. So what I would do is try and take the square root of 729 and see if that gives us anything. So square root of 729 does, in fact, give us uh, 27. Okay, so, so I know that 729 can be write, written as 27 times 27. So that's a good place to start, is start with, the, with those factors. Now, 27 and 27 just so happens to also add up to 54. So now I know that I need to put a plus 27 and a plus 27 here on that one. I would get x to the sixth plus 27x cubed, and a 27x cubed would give me the 54x cubed. 27 times 27 is 729. Now, because I see a repeated thing here, I can now write this as x cubed plus 27, all that quantity squared that I have. But the part inside, that's a difference of cubes. So now I can use difference of cubes on this. So you want to keep on going as far as possible because it says factor completely here. So I want to factor the inside on that. So I'm going to put brackets around the whole thing squared and just work with the inside since I'll have parentheses in there as well. And I'm going to use the difference uh, or the sum of cubes formula on this. 27 can be written as three cubed. And so this is going to be X plus three. And then the sum of cubes formula is a plus minus plus is the signs that you have inside. So this would be X squared minus three times X, and then plus this squared. So three squared would give you a nine. So all that quantity squared you would have. The last thing that you could do with this is you can square each of these individually. That way we don't need the brackets. And so this here would be your final answer because both of these would be squared. So again, we started with the original. We just did regular factoring on this. Factors of 729 that add to 54. We did have to include the higher power on that X cubed for each of those. And we got X cubed plus 27 squared. So then what I did was I factored the inside one. So all this that you see inside the brackets, that would be the factorization of X cubed plus 27 using the sum of cubes formula and then since all that is squared, we can just square each one of those individually. Okay, let's do another one of those. So again, this is another one, a type of one that we're going to first start off by doing just regular factoring like this. Okay, I have X to the fourth this time, which means I'm going to write this as X squared and X squared because X squared times X squared will give us X to the fourth. If you're not sure what, you can do with the 1296. Again, I would recommend in this section, take the square root of 1296 first, because then let's see if that goes in evenly. So square root of 1296, uh, that does work. That gives us a 36. And so I know that 36 and 36 will give us 72, which means that uh, both of these, we actually want to make them minus 36 because Negative 36 and negative 36, they multiply to make positive 1296, but then they add together to be negative 72. 
And you get the X squared because when you FOIL this one, when you multiply, you get X to the fourth. And then this would be multiplied by the N there. You get negative 36 X squared, another negative 36 X squared, which would give you the negative 72 X squared. And then negative 36, negative 36 gives you 1296. All right, so now this can be written as X squared minus 36 quantity squared. But inside there, X squared minus 36, we can use the difference of squares formula. That's gonna be X plus six, X minus six. And so all that is inside the brackets. And of course that's being squared because of this square right here. So then you can square both of those individually and get X plus six quantity squared and X minus six quantity squared. And that right there would be your final answer on this one. Let's do one more. Okay, so this one here, once again, we're gonna start by regular factoring. We have X to the sixth this time, so we wanna do a cube and a cube. If it's higher powers, just divide it by two, and then that's the thing that goes inside each of these. That's another way of looking at that as well. X cubed and X cubed, multiply those, you add the exponents, you would get six. Now the one, there's really only one possibility that could go there would just be a one and a one. One times one multiplies to make one, but they also, if you make both of them negative, then that would combine together to be a negative two. And you'd have ne negative two X cubed because of the foiling that you would do on this one. This can be written as X, minus, X cubed minus one quantity squared. And so then inside the parentheses, you can factor this by using the difference of cubes formula. So that's gonna be X minus one. And then the one, so I have my A would be X and the B would be one in this case. So I'm gonna do X squared. Now it's gonna be X squared. Um, we have there for that one, X squared plus AB. So it's plus, one times X or just X, and then plus the B squared. So the B would just be one in this case. So one squared would give you a one inside. So then you'd have all that would be squared. We could square each one of these individually. And if we do, we're going to get this. So again, each thing inside the brackets the square on the outside, all this is being multiplied together, that would be factored completely.